Hi everyone, in this problem we're going to find a power series representation for this function centered at c equals negative 2, and we're also going to find the interval of convergence. So first, there is a formula that we're going to be using in order to do this problem. The formula is 1 over 1 minus x is equal to the infinite sum as n runs from 0 to infinity of x to the n. And this formula holds as long as the absolute value of x is less than 1. So in this problem, we are going to use this formula in order to find a power series centered at negative 2. So our final answer, this is really key, has to look something like this. You have to have an a sub n. And then it's x minus c to the n, but c is negative, so it's really x plus 2 to the n, because it's really x minus negative 2. So our final answer has to look like this, okay? It has to have an x plus 2 to the n. All right, let's go ahead and go through this very, very carefully. So this is 3 over 5 minus x. Okay, this is the most important part in the problem. Okay, so this is equal to, so it's a fraction. So the first thing you do is you think about the center. So the center is negative 2, and you want it to fit the form of 1 over 1 minus x. But it really needs to be 1 over 1 minus x plus 2, right? Because the center is negative 2, so you need an x plus 2 there. So the first thing you do is you put an x plus 2 here. I'd say, whoa, you can't just put that there. We can, as long as we fix it later. So we put down the x plus 2 because we know our center is negative 2. Notice there's a negative here in front of the x, so that has to go there. Boom. Okay, so now what do we have? We have negative x, which is okay. We have that. And then minus 2, right? We have negative x minus 2. So how do you get from minus 2 to 5, right, because we want to 5. Well, you add a 7, so you just put a 7 here. Boom. And you can check, 7 minus 2 is 5. The 3 is still up top. So again, that was the key step in the problem. So now we can pull out the 3, and we can pull out the 7. That leaves us with 1 over. On the bottom, we have a 1. Then minus, we pull out a 7 from the bottom, that's going to give us x plus 2 over 7, right? If you pull out a 7 from x plus 2, it's just x plus 2 over 7. And you can check that by actually working backwards. If you distribute the 7, you'll notice the 7s actually cancel. At this point, we've reached a point where we can actually use our formula. So we can use our formula on this piece here, which I've circled in purple. So this is equal to 3 7 infinite sum and runs from 0 to infinity and this whole thing here this x plus 2 over 7 that's our x that's your x so that becomes x plus 2 over 7 to the n right that whole thing is to the nth power so this is equal to let's go ahead and distribute that 3 7 so infinite sum as n runs from 0 to infinity 3 sevenths, x plus 2 to the n over 7 to the n. And then one more step for simplification. This is the infinite sum as n runs from 0 to infinity of 3 times x plus 2 to the n. And then here you have 7 to the 1 times 7 to the n. So that's 7 to the n plus 1. So this would be the power series uh, representation for our function. So now we still have to find the interval of convergence. To do that, we're going to use this step here, which I've indicated with the star. This step is only true, well, if you look at the original formula, if the absolute value of x is less than 1. So in our case, it's the absolute value of x plus 2 over 7 is less than 1. That's the only time that this holds. So 
Uh, this is actually the absolute value of x plus 2 over 7. Because you can just take the absolute value of the top and the absolute value of the bottom, and the absolute value of 7 is 7. Then you can multiply by 7. So you get absolute value of x plus 2 less than 7. I'm gonna, I'm, I ran out of room, so I'm going to come... I'm going to come down here. So we have absolute value x plus 2 less than 7. When you drop the absolute value, you do get a plus or a minus. So 7 and negative 7. Subtract 2 from all three sides will give us negative 9 less than x less than 5. And that would be it. That's going to be our interval of convergence. So to get the interval of convergence, you always use that step. It's the step where you use the formula, and then you just take whatever is here, uh, put it in absolute values, and set it less than 1 and go through the motions. Just don't forget the plus or minus uh, when you drop the absolute value. But again, the key step uh, was right here. It's right here at the beginning. It's this first step, and this first step takes a lot of practice. If you just didn't watch this video and you just saw this step written down, you'd be like, what, what, what happened? How, how did that happen? What's going on? So understanding how each piece is written down and the order it's written down is important. In fact, let me do it one more time. So we have three over five minus X. We know the center is negative two. So we know that we need an X plus two because we want X minus negative two, which is X plus two, right? The formula is 1 over 1 minus x. So we want it to be 1 over 1 minus and then something with an x plus 2. So what you do is you put down the x plus 2. That's the first thing you actually, like, you physically write that down. You say, okay, x plus 2. Then you say, all right, now I got to make it right. Well, there's a negative here in front of the x, so you put the negative there. Okay, so now what do we have? We have negative x minus 2. But we have a 5 here. So to get from minus 2 to 5, we add 7. Boom and the three still up top. And after that, it's pretty easy. Well, easier, you pull out the three and you pull out the seven, et cetera. Uh, this kind of idea comes up also in other areas of math, so uh, it's worth learning. Really, really uh, powerful stuff. I hope this video has been helpful. Good luck.